All right, let's jump right in and unlock some IELTS secrets, specifically the speaking test. And, you know, more specifically, part one, where they ask about your hometown. Oh, the hometown questions. They seem simple, but there's a real art to nailing those. Totally. And that's exactly what we're diving deep into today. How to make your hometown answers shine. We've got some great source material to work with, full of examples and strategies. We're going to break it all down. Perfect. So our sources highlight these four things the examiners listen for. Fluency, vocabulary, grammar, and... Pronunciation. Can't forget pronunciation. Right. They all kind of work together to make you sound natural and confident. Like, what stands out to you about sounding natural, especially when it comes to pronunciation? Well, think about it. You could have amazing vocabulary, perfect grammar, but... Because your pronunciation is unclear. Exactly. It's like the examiner might miss how brilliant your ideas are because they just can't quite understand you. It's true. Clear pronunciation can really be a game changer, even if you have a few small grammar slips here and there. I've seen it happen. Good pronunciation can sometimes even outweigh those minor errors. Interesting. Okay, well, let's get into some real IELTS questions you might actually encounter. Our sources have like five common hometown questions they go through. Yeah, we're going to unpack those, find those golden nuggets of advice to help you craft really standout answers. Love it. Okay, so first up, where is your hometown? Seems simple, right? You'd think so. But there's an art to it. Our source material, they have a great example using Edinburgh. What's interesting is they say, answer directly, then add the cool details. Yes. Set the stage, then invite the examiner in, like, my hometown is Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland. Boom. Yeah. Straight to the point. Informative. Right. Then they add, it's known for its historic sites, like Edinburgh Castle and its lively festivals. Ah, see, now it's interesting. Good vocabulary, too. Exactly. A simple sentence becomes a captivating little intro. Nice. Okay, yeah. question number two. This one's a bit more personal. What do you like about your hometown? Ah, now you can add those personal touches. Right. Specific examples, things like that. One of our sources, they give an answer about Vancouver. Yeah. And what's really effective is how they balance, like, the city's natural beauty with the urban perks, you know? Makes sense. They talk about hiking in the mountains, relaxing on the beach. You get a glimpse of the lifestyle. I can picture it now. All right, question three takes us back in time a bit. How has your hometown changed over the years? Ooh, this is where you show you can compare and contrast, but keep things positive. Yeah, you don't want to just complain about how everything's different now. Right. And one of our examples, the one about Edinburgh, they do this really well. They mention the new development, the modern buildings next to the historic landmarks. But then oh, there's a twist. Exactly. They say the warmth of the locals. That hasn't changed. It's like even though things are evolving, the heart of the city is still there. I love that. OK, on to question four. This one's kind of tricky. Is your hometown a good place for young people? Ooh, yeah. This one, you need a balanced perspective. You can't just be all sunshine and rainbows. Nope. Gotta acknowledge the good and be the bad. Our Vancouver example, it does this perfectly. Highlights those great universities, job opportunities, but... Doesn't shy away from that high cost of living either. True. They use phrases like on top of that, and the only downside might be, you know, to make it sound natural while still being honest. Like showing the full picture, not just a highlight reel. Makes sense. Okay, last one in this set. Would you like to live in your hometown in the future? Deeply personal, but how do we connect it to showing off our language skills? Well, instead of a simple yes or no. Which is tempting. Right. You want to give a thoughtful answer, like dive into your reasoning. The Edinburgh example, they do this, talking about wanting to explore new places, but still feeling connected to their hometown. That wanderlust, but with a love for your roots. Exactly. And they describe Edinburgh so beautifully. You know, yeah. there's cobblestone streets, historic landmarks, cozy pubs. Then they end with, that being said, I'd like to gain more experiences abroad first. Oh, I see. It leaves that door open for personal growth, but still shows appreciation for their hometown. It's like saying, I love where I come from, but I'm ready for new adventures too. Now, before we get into some even more advanced techniques, let's actually put what we've learned into action. Little role play, your game. Oh, <laughs> I'm always up for a challenge. Let's do it. All right, picture this. I'm the IELTS examiner and you're the test taker. I'm going to ask you to describe a famous place in your hometown. Ready? Bring it on. Okay, let's go. Can you describe a famous place in your hometown? Certainly. One of the most famous places in Edinburgh is the Royal Mile. It's this historic street that runs right through the heart of the city, connecting Edinburgh Castle to the Palace of Holyrood House. Ooh, I've heard of that. It's lined with these charming shops, you know. 
and <laughs> talented street performers. Some of the city's best restaurants are there, too. It's really a must visit for anyone coming to Edinburgh. Wow, I feel like I'm there. You really brought it to life with those details. Thanks, I tried to use that vivid language we were talking about. <laughs> you did great. Okay, let's take a moment to recap some of the key takeaways from this first part of our deep dive. We talked about expanding on simple answers, descriptive language, specific examples, adding those personal touches. Would you say those are like the foundations? Absolutely. Those are the building blocks for strong answers. And remember, it's not about memorizing a script. It's about having that framework. Yeah. And the vocabulary, you know, to adapt to whatever questions they throw at you. Right. Those building blocks. But how about vocabulary specifically? Any techniques to make sure our word choices are impactful? Oh, vocabulary is key. Instead of those basic words, try to use more advanced descriptive terms. Like instead of busy, how about vibrant or bustling? I like that. It's like adding more color to your language. Exactly. We saw that in the Edinburgh example. Those small changes make a big difference. They do. But what about those times when you want to go beyond individual words? Create phrases that pack a punch. Our sources mention idiomatic expressions. Are those worth incorporating? Absolutely. Idioms are those colorful phrases that add personality and make you sound more natural, like little spices that make your answers more flavorful. But here's the key. Use them appropriately and naturally. Don't force them in if they don't fit. So it's all about finding that balance between sounding fluent and authentic. Can you give an example of how an idiom might work in an IELTS answer? Sure. Instead of saying, my hometown has changed a lot, you could say, my hometown has gone through a complete transformation. See how that's more vivid and engaging. It is. It's like taking the simple statement and turning it into a movie scene. Right. Now, our sources also mention collocations. What exactly are those, and how can they help us step up our language game? Collocations are words that naturally go together, like heavy rain or strong coffee. Using them well shows you understand how words work together in English, which is a big part of fluency. Ah, so it's not just about using fancy vocabulary. It's about using words that sound natural and flow well together. Our sources give some good examples, like instead of saying, Edinburgh has many old buildings, you could say, Edinburgh boasts a wealth of historic architecture. Exactly. Boasts a wealth of is a much stronger and more sophisticated collocation. Small change, but it elevates your language. Okay, I'm starting to see how all these pieces fit together. Vocabulary, idioms, collocations. Now, what about grammar? I know a lot of test takers get nervous about grammar, but our sources seem to suggest that it's not about using the most complicated structures. You're right. It's not about showing off. It's about showing a range of grammatical structures that you can use confidently and accurately. Incorporate different tenses, conditional sentences, relative clauses. So it's about variety and accuracy more than complexity for the sake of complexity. Our sources emphasize that using these structures well helps you express your ideas precisely and clearly. Can you give an example of how this might work in an IELTS response? Sure. When discussing how your hometown has changed, you could use the present perfect continuous tense to emphasize ongoing developments. For example, my hometown has been undergoing a lot of construction lately. This highlights the continuous change, adding a bit of sophistication. That's a great tip. Okay, let's move on to another critical element of communication, connecting ideas smoothly. The art of flow. This is where transition words and phrases come in. They act like bridges between your thoughts, guiding the listener from one idea to the next. Think of words like however, moreover, in addition to. They make a big difference in how coherent your speech sounds. For instance, let's say you're talking about the pros and cons of your hometown. You could use however to introduce a contrasting point. My hometown has great job opportunities. However, the cost of living is quite high. That's a perfect example. Okay, we've covered a lot of ground in terms of techniques, but what about those curveball questions the IELTS throws our way? I'm talking about the ones that ask you to imagine or speculate. Our sources call them hypothetical questions. Yeah, those can be tricky. Like, what would you change about your hometown if you could? Right, those require quick thinking. Any advice on how to tackle those? Stay calm. Take a moment to think and structure your response logically. Our sources suggest a framework. Acknowledge the question, state your opinion, provide reasons and examples. You might start by saying, if I could change one thing about my hometown. It would be. Exactly. It would be to improve public transportation. This would make it easier for people to get around and reduce traffic congestion. Simple and clear. 
Okay, that makes sense. But what about those questions that are more about personal preferences? Like, what's your favorite place in your hometown and why? These seem straightforward, but is there a way to answer them that really wows the examiner? You're right. They can be deceptively simple. But remember, even with personal preferences, you can still show off your vocabulary and grammar, go beyond basic answers, provide detail and depth. So instead of just saying, I like the park because it's pretty, you could say something like, my favorite place is the Central Park. It's a sprawling green space that offers respite from the hustle and bustle of the city. I find it incredibly tranquil and rejuvenating. Perfect. You've used descriptive language, painted a picture, explained your connection to the place. Okay, these strategies are great. Now let's tackle one more challenging question type before we move on. Comparison questions. Ah, yes. The ones asking you to compare your hometown to another city or to how it was in the past. They really test your ability to analyze and contrast. And our sources recommend using specific phrases to structure those comparisons well. Right. Phrases like similar to, in contrast to, while, whereas, and on the other hand, make your comparison stand out. For example, if you're comparing your hometown to another city, you could say, while both cities offer a vibrant cultural scene, my hometown is more laid back and affordable, whereas the other city is more fast-paced and expensive. Clear and to the point. I love how concise that is. But what if the listener doesn't have a lot of experience with other cities? Can they still answer comparison questions well? Absolutely. Even without knowing a lot about other cities, you can still compare based on general knowledge or even hypothetical scenarios. The key is to show your ability to analyze and contrast. So it's about showing those critical thinking skills. But before we wrap up this section on question types, it's important to remember that the IELTS is unpredictable. <laughs> we can't cover every possible scenario, right? Absolutely. Practice is key. The more you practice with a variety of questions, the more comfortable you'll become. So it's about being flexible and confident. And on that note, I think it's time for a quick break. When we come back, we'll dive into some final tips to help you polish those answers and walk into that IELTS speaking test feeling like a rock star. Stay tuned. It's about connecting, you know, with the examiner, like on a human level. Okay, interesting. Our sources talk about personalizing your answers a lot, but what's that actually mean for the IELTS? Think of it this way. The examiner wants to hear your story, your perspective. What makes your hometown special to you? Not just a list of facts from Wikipedia. Exactly. Weave in personal anecdotes, memories, even opinions, you know. Make it your own. So like those little sprinkles of personality that make you stand out. Can you give an example? How would that actually work? Okay, imagine they ask about your favorite place in your hometown. Instead of just describing the place, share a memory that makes it meaningful. Like, okay. my favorite place is that old bookstore downtown. I spent hours there as a kid, lost in all those books. It's where my love of reading really began. Ah, I get it. It's not just a description anymore. It's like a little story. Right. It pulls the examiner in. They get to know you a bit. Exactly. Speaking of stories, though, we got to be mindful of time in the IELTS speaking test. We only have so long to make a good impression. True. We can't ramble forever. No. So practice with a timer. Get a feel for the pacing, you know. Make sure you're covering everything, but still within the time limit. Details, but concise? Yes. It might help to like mentally outline your answer before you start speaking. Helps you stay focused, hit those key points. Okay, good tip. So take a breath, think about the question, then structure your response. Makes sense, right? It does. Now, what about pronunciation? I know that can be a big worry for some people. Oh, pronunciation is so important. Even if your grammar and vocabulary are amazing, if they can't understand you, it'll hurt your score. Makes sense. So how do we work on that? Pay attention to individual sounds. Yes. Word stress, intonation, all of it. There are tons of resources online, libraries, even apps that can help. Oh, right. And I bet a native speaker or a language teacher could give some good feedback, too. Absolutely. Sometimes it's hard to hear our own mistakes. That's so true. Okay, before we wrap up, I want to touch on something our sources really emphasize. It's not a technique or anything, more like a mindset. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. That whole relaxation authenticity thing. Yeah, exactly. It sounds cheesy, but when you're nervous, it affects everything. How fluently you speak, your pronunciation, even how clearly you think. Right, like your brain just freezes up. Remember, the examiner isn't trying to trick you. They want you to do well. Think of it as a conversation, not an interrogation. Yeah. A chance to share your story, connect with another person. And be yourself. 
let your personality shine through. Our sources are big on that. Don't be afraid to show your passion, your enthusiasm. And even if you make a mistake, don't let it throw you off. Just keep going. Focus on getting your ideas across. Now, before we say goodbye, I want to leave our listeners with a question to think about. Ooh, I like where this is going. What's one unique thing about your hometown? Something you could weave into your answers to make them really memorable. Hmm. Something that captures the essence of your home. Like a local legend. A special tradition. Yeah. Or maybe a hidden gem that only locals know about. Even just a personal story that sums up the spirit of the place. Make it your own. Make it stand out. Because ultimately, that's what'll make you shine in the IELTS speaking test. Couldn't agree more. Preparation is key, but so is that spark of individuality. Well said. Now it's time to wrap up this part of our IELTS hometown deep dive. We've covered so much ground, from basic tips to those more advanced techniques, and even like mental strategies. I think our listeners are ready to tackle those IELTS questions with confidence. I hope so. Remember, practice makes perfect, so keep refining your answers, and most importantly, believe in yourself. You got this. We're rooting for you. All right, we're back, ready to polish those IELTS answers and make them shine. Let's do it. I'm feeling super motivated after all those techniques we talked about. Me too. Yeah. But, you know, the IELTS speaking test, it's not just about, like, reciting facts or perfect grammar. There's more to it. It's about connecting with the examiner, like on a human level. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Our sources talk about personalizing your answers, but what does that actually mean? For the IELTS, I mean... So the examiner, they want to hear your story, your take on things. What makes your hometown special to you, not just anyone? Not just textbook answers. Exactly. So bring in those personal stories, memories, opinions. Make it your answer. Okay, so those little details that make you, you. Can you give an example how this might actually work? Sure. Let's say they ask about your favorite place. Instead of just describing it, you know, share a memory that makes it special. Like, my favorite place is that old bookstore downtown. Spent hours there as a kid, totally lost in the books. That's where I really fell in love with reading. Ah, I see. Now it's not just a description, it's a memory. Right. It's way more engaging. Speaking of engaging, we got to talk about time management. The IELTS speaking test, it's timed. We don't have forever to impress them. You're right. We need those details. Yeah. But got to be concise too. So practice with a timer. Get used to that pacing. Make sure you can cover everything. Without running out of time. Right. It can help to like... Make a mental outline before you start talking. Oh, that's smart. It helps you stay focused, you know? Yeah. Make sure you hit those main points without rambling. Take a breath, think about the question, then boom, go for it. Exactly. Now, what about pronunciation? That can be a big one for people. It's huge E. Even with perfect grammar, amazing vocabulary, if they can't understand you. It's game over. Basically. Mm. So pay attention to how you say things. Individual sounds, word stress, intonation, all of it. Any tips on how to improve that? Tons of resources out there. Websites, libraries, apps. You can even ask a native speaker or a teacher for feedback. Right, because sometimes it's hard to hear our own mistakes. Exactly. Fresh ears are helpful. Before we wrap up this whole deep dive, there is one more thing our sources really emphasize. It's not a technique or anything. It's more of a... A mindset thing. Yes. Yeah. It sounds cliche, but honestly, relaxation is key. When you're nervous, it shows. It really does. Remember, the examiner wants you to do well. It's not a trick. It's a conversation. Just be yourself. Let your personality shine through. Show your passion, your enthusiasm. Even if you mess up, don't sweat it. Just keep going. Exactly. All right, before we say goodbye, one final question for our listeners. What's something unique about your hometown? Something you could use to make your answers stand out? Ooh, I love that. Like a secret weapon. Right. Maybe a local legend or a tradition that only happens there, a hidden gem. Or even a personal story that just captures the spirit of the place. Exactly. Make it yours. Make it memorable. That's what will set you apart. It's all about those special touches. Well, I think that about wraps up our IELTS hometown deep dive. We've covered so much ground today. I feel like we gave everyone a good toolkit to work with. Definitely. Remember, preparation is key. Keep practicing. Keep refining those answers. And most importantly, believe in yourself. You got this. We're cheering you on. Good luck with your IELTS journey. And until next time, happy learning.